Welcome to House of the Dragon Lore. Rumor has it that Ty Tennant, who is David Tennant's son, and David Tennant plays on Doctor Who, apparently Ty Tennant is cast as Aegon II in House of the Dragon. And I think that's a really good choice. Um, I'm glad that they're going to be starting where Aegon's young, so we'll get a bit of his father in there, Viserys the first. And he got that like vampire y look, which is kind of looking like the theme that they're kind of going for, you know? So that's cool news if it is the actual choice for the actor, but I believe it is because from some of the pictures that we've seen, um, it does resemble Ty Tennant now that I'm looking at a picture of him. So I believe that to be true. Also, there's been a lot of bickering on Twitter about the sigil for um, House Valerion, and it's not really a big deal to me too much if they change it on on the show House of the Dragons, and it's different in the books. Like it's not a big deal. Um, I think what they're what they kind of got planned and looking like the sigil. And the show is like an actual horse head with like the seahorse body. But the actual sigil in the books is the seahorse. And I don't really care what they do, you know. I mean, it'd be nice to stay genuine to the books. But So that's really all the news that I have on the House of the Dragon show. But I was like thinking the other day how amazing Amelia Clark's costumes were as Daenerys Targaryen. Like, I just have so many favorites. I love the leather, like, winged um, coat dress she had on. And it was, like, blended with, like, um, that, like, dark burgundy red and black blended together with the color. Like, I like how she mirrored her costume or how they mirrored her costume to resemble Drogon. But her costume was so cool and I used to love that satin neck. Um, the collar that she wore and the cape and the three dragon um, pin that and she'd like swirl her braids into like a crown on her head but I just loved her hairdo the leather outfit just everything about her outfit in the very last two episodes also I love the white fur coat I'm hoping it was fake fur but I absolutely loved it like it looked she looked kind of like um, the character in Frozen. You know? It's such a cool looking costume and like it's so fashionable. They did such a great job with the, cash- with the costumes in Game of Thrones that I'm hoping for House of the Dragon that they do the same thing because that's something that's pretty important to a lot of people and not just me. It looks like they're kind of going for like the Tudor era and they're actually taking some um ideas from actual history for the costumes that I've seen so far which is okay it's good I'd like something unique as well and the like red and black colors and the greens it's just I hope that it's done well because that's a big part of um the the joy of watching the show for me and it's you know it's always different to see what you're picturing in your head while you're reading a book put on screen Sometimes it's totally different. You're like, no, yeah, that's a great idea. I like it that way. Or sometimes you're disappointed in the way they portrayed your character. I think Daenerys was like an amazing character on Game of Thrones. And Amelia Clark did an amazing job in portraying her. And even though they ended it on a sour note, we didn't feel satisfied. We didn't get what we needed out of this ending. I still think the show was amazing, the costumes were amazing, the dragons were amazing, and it just got rushed in the end, and all the actors were amazing, so I'm really glad that they did the show, and I really hope that House of the Dragon gives some of that satisfaction that Game of Thrones did, but it ends on a better note, which I'm pretty sure it will, because George R. R. Martin wrote Fire and Blood, which they're basing the whole show on, and he... He pretty much finished it. There's going to be a second book, maybe, if he makes it to write it. It showed how the dragons 
all ended. So there's going to be a bittersweet ending. There's going to be a lot of surprises. It's going to be like, oh my God, that kind of feeling again, which I can't wait. And it's only like another year away. So that's crazy. We're going to be getting dragons again really soon. Um, so I'm going to get into, um, get into it here. I decided to do this episode on Maylee's The Red Queen. And she got a very interesting story to tell. And here we go. Maylee's was described in Fire and Blood as, quote, The Red Queen, she was called, for the scarlet scales that covered her. The membranes of her wings were pink, her crest, horns, and claws bright as copper, end quote. Maylee's was said to be as swift a dragon as Westeros has ever seen, and she easily outpaced Caraxes and Vagar when she and her brothers flew together. And by 129 AC, Maylee's had grown lazy, but was still fearsome when roused. Maylee's was old, cunning, and no stranger to battle. Maylee's had two mounts during her lifetime, and those were Princess Alyssa Targaryen and Princess Rhaenys Targaryen. Her first rider, Princess Alyssa Targaryen, was the fifth-born child of King Jaehaerys I and Queen Alizan, my favorite king and queen, as I may have mentioned before. And I can't wait to do an episode on their dragons because I can't wait to talk about them. There's lots of good stories. As a baby, Alyssa resembled her deceased sister Daenerys. But this resemblance faded as Alyssa aged. She became long-faced and skinny. She had dirty blonde tangled hair without a trace of silver. She had mismatched eyes, one violet, the other green. She had big ears and a lopsided smile. At the age of six, she broke her nose, which healed crooked. In her character, Alyssa took after her brother, Balon. As a child, she did not act like a girl. She would dress in boys' clothes whenever possible and preferred to ride, climb, and duel with wooden swords over more ladylike activities and shunned the company of girls. She had a warrior's heart, according to Archmaester Glendane. As a child, she refused to eat porridge. Alyssa was strong, quick, and spirited. And in an excerpt from Fire and Blood, it was quoted that, Like her brothers before her, Alyssa Targaryen meant to be a dragon rider, and sooner rather than later. Aemon had flown at 17, Balon at 16. Alyssa meant to do it at 15. According to the tale set down by the dragon keepers, it was all that they could do to persuade her not to claim Balerion. He is old and slow, princess, they had to tell her. Surely you want a swifter mount. In the end, they prevailed, and Princess Alyssa ascended into the sky upon Maylees, a splendid scarlet she-dragon never before ridden. Red maidens, the two of us, the princess boasted, laughing, but now we've both been mounted. And um, Alyssa loved to fly on her dragon, and it was noted that the princess was seldom long away from the dragon pit after all day. Flying was her sweetest thing in the world. She would often say, and the very sweetest thing could not be mentioned in the company of ladies, The dragon keepers had not been wrong. Maylee's was as swift a dragon as Westeros had ever seen, easily outpacing Caraxes and Vagar when she and her brothers flew together. In 77 AC, Alyssa gave birth to her first child, and that was a son named Viserys. Although she was advised not to do it, Alyssa put the newborn Viserys in swaddling clothes and mounted Maylees with him when he was nine days old. In 81 AC, Alyssa gave birth to Daemon. Within a fortnight after he had been born, she took him up in the sky upon her dragon, as well as Viserys was said to giggle the whole time. That's so cute. You picture with the little baby strapped on, he's just like laughing and having the time of his life on the dragon. 
In 83 AC, Alyssa was announced to be pregnant again. She gave birth the next year to another son, Aegon. The labor was long and difficult, and Alyssa never fully recovered from the childbirth. She died within a year, at the age of 24. Aegon died half a year later, not even a year old. Alyssa's death shattered Balon. Now riderless, Maelys was claimed by Rhaenerys in 87 AC. And Rhaenys was one of my favorite characters, and she's going to be in House of the Dragon, of course. Um, it's going to be a pretty big scene, and I'm curious, of course, to see how it's going to play out. Rhaenys was a great beauty. She had black hair and pale violet eyes. By the time she was 55, she had a lean, lined face, and her black hair was streaked with white. She was clever, capable, spirited, proud, fierce, and fearless woman. She had a fiery temperament, like, you know, a lot of the Targaryens had that fire in them. Rhaenys married Corlys Valerion, the sea snake, in 90 AC at the age of 16. She insisted on arriving at the wedding on the back of Maelys, as quoted in Fire and Blood. Rhaenys, at 6 and 10, was a fearless young beauty, and more than a match for her mariner, a dragon rider since the age of 13, she insisted upon arriving for the wedding on Maelys, the Red Queen, the magnificent scarlet she-dragon that had once borne her aunt Alyssa. We can go back to the ends of Earth together, she promised, Sir Cor- she promised Sir Corliss, but I'll get there first as I'll be flying. End quote. So when the Dance of Dragons began in 129 AC, Princess Rainey sat on the Black Council of Queen Rhaenyra Targaryen, and when the Valyrian fleet closed off the gullet, sailing forth from Dragonstone and Driftmark to block all shipping for Blackwater Bay, the Black's plan was for Rainies to fly overhead on Maelys to keep the Greens from attacking their ships with dragons. A decision that later infuriated Corlys Valerian. It is said that the sound of leathern wings was heard across the sea, and the dragon Maelys appeared above Rook's rest. On her back, in steel and copper armor that flashed in the sun, rode the great Rhaenys Targaryen. And this is a quote from Fire and Blood. Sir Christian Cole was not dismayed. Aegon's hand had expected this, counted on it. Drums beat out a command, and archers rushed forward, long bowmen and crossbowmen both, filling the air with arrows and quarrels. Sir Criston sat on his white horse shouting, Aim for the rider! Through the smoke and flame, Maylie's roared, smoke swirling from her nostrils, a stallion kicking in her jaws as tongues of fire engulfed him. Scorpions were cranked upward to loose iron bolts of the sort that had once felled Maraxes and Dorne. Maylie suffered a score of hits, but the arrows only served to make her more angry. She swept down, spitting fire to right and left. Knights burned in their saddles as the hair and hide and harness of their horses went up in flames. Men at arms dropped their spears and scattered. Some tried to hide behind their shields, but neither oak nor iron could withstand dragon's breath. Then came an answering roar. Two more winged shapes appeared. The king astride Sunfire the Golden, and his brother Amon upon Vagar. Christian Cole had sprung his trap, and Rainies had come snatching at the bait. Now the teeth closed around her. When Vagar and Sunfire appeared above Rook's rest, Maelys fought them in the air. According to Archmaester Glendane, Maelys might have stood a chance against the older Vagar alone, but not against Vagar and Sunfire combined. Maelys managed to close her jaw around Sunfire's neck until Vagar fell upon them, after which the three dragons crashed to the ground half a league from Rook's rest. Those who were close to the dragons' battle did not live to tell the tale. It took hours for the fires to burn out. Later, only Vagar rose unharmed. Maelys was dead, broken by the fall and ripped to pieces upon the ground. And Sunfire, that splendid golden beast, had one wing half torn from his body. 
A body believed to be Rene's Targaryen was later found beside the carcass of her dragon, but it burned so badly that no one could be sure it was her. Beloved daughter of Lady Jocelyn Baratheon and Prince Aemon Targaryen, faithful wife to Lord Corlys Valerian, mother and grandmother, the queen who never was, lived fearlessly, and died amidst blood and fire. She was 55 years old. And, oh my god, this next part in uh, Maylie's journey is so disgusting and disrespectful. It's just, like, it's disturbing. I found it a bit disturbing, you know, but there's no limits in George's writing. Like, just, like, it's so dark, and I guess that's why it's good, because you really feel the emotion. But here's a quote from Fire and Blood. Lord Stanton's head was carried back to King's Landing and mounted above the old gate, but it was the head of the dragon Maylies drawn through the city on a cart that awed the crowds of small folk into silence. Septon Eustace tells us that thousands left King's Landing afterward until the Dowager Queen, Alicent, ordered the city gates closed and barred. I wonder why the small folk left um did they realize that shit was going to go down or were they just so disgusted by these people that were in power that they didn't feel safe anymore in king's landing it's hard to say but you know it's pretty disgusting like wheeling the head of such a precious creature it's so unfortunate that a whole family family was torn apart by each other over sitting on a throne again you know how i said before that throne is definitely cursed but to go as far as to parade around with a dragon head which is in your sigil your blood of the dragon but yet you're proud of a dragon being killed it's just um it doesn't make sense and it's such a bizarre story, and that's why it's so incredible. Maylie's was definitely another courageous dragon, and she was rode by two Targaryen goddesses and warriors. So I'm looking forward to seeing what she's going to look like in CGI. It's going to be crazy to see all these dragon riders, because we're just used to the one dragon rider, Daenerys, and then, of course, Jon Snow those couple times that he rode Rhaegal. The Targaryen family are definitely unique and magical. And that's all I have for you guys on Maylie's The Red Queen for now. So we will chat again soon. I hope you enjoyed this episode and I look forward to chatting with you again about dragons in the near future. Have a great night and we will chat again soon. Bye.